Best people, best people, you are the market sniper. We're going to be discussing why did Steve Van Meter and George Gammon, yes, our friend George Gammon on the other channel, why are they talking about gold selling off? Why are they talking about gold selling off? Should you be worried? We're going to go into this right here, right now in this video. So let's get into it. What is the main story? So if we have a look at Robert Kiyosaki, um, big fan of precious metals, uh, also of Bitcoin. Uh, he had Steve Van Meter on, I respect. He says, lots of decision, gold to crash to $1,000. He states markets are tired of waiting for gold to go higher. If gold drops to 1000 Robert will buy more. Uh, I'm an investor, not a trader. But he, uh, he is responding to Steve Van Meter's opinion. He also says, uh, David Hunter, it says buy gold now answer both smart men well um dave hunter hasn't had the best of timing for us uh, overall in our view he was calling for the equities to moon uh, over a year ago now it feels uh, into a head and shoulder he will eventually be right because in a stagflationary environment equities will go up but in terms of timing he didn't strike me as particularly technical so maybe steve van meter is right explode higher all roads lead to gold on the back of this. These are sort of Goldilocks conditions for gold, perfect conditions for gold. But I think that experts are completely wrong about gold. So George is saying, and you've got to uh, agree, that there is a plethora of people right now just saying gold, gold, gold. Now, we are accurate and we have been behind that, but we're not that excited about the specific timing right now. Um, because we're also seeing evidence, personally, of demand-destroying events potentially on the way. We'll get back to that in a minute. Why is George uh, cautioning and why is Steve Van Meter cautioning against gold right now? A thousand dollars? Hmm, that seems a bit like a round number and a throwaway number. But is it possible? Yes, it could be. But it depends on a number of things. Let's hear what George has to say. And I'm going to reveal why it won simple fast step step number one let's go over gold during recessions now this is a fascinating chart so you're going to want to take notes on this the red numbers indicate the days prior to the official start of a recession the black numbers indicate the days after the official start on the left we go from we'll call it 95 up to 115 this is basically an index that starts at 100 and as you would imagine this blue line represents the average price of gold so about 150 days prior to a recession, usually the price of gold starts to trend up until we get to, let's just say 90, 70 days prior. So that'd be what, maybe two or three months. And then the price of gold starts to come all the way back down till we get to that recession. And then in the first few weeks of the recession, it starts to flatten out before going absolutely parabolic. <laughs> and it I wouldn't say that's parabolic, but the key thesis that George is pointing out is once you get to a key recognition point for a recession, um, you are actually losing value in gold on the way down. So again, uh, losing value on the way of gold on the way down. It peaks out usually about 116 days or so after the recession has already started. Now, as you guys know, the official recession date is always announced after the fact, meaning the central planners are looking in the rearview mirror and they say, oh, oh, uh, yeah, this is FYI, there was a recession that started about three or four months ago. Now, the reason why your central planners do that is because they don't want you thinking recession when it is actually a recession. And we've got a couple of key points. In actual fact, technically, you've already met the criteria for recession way back in February, uh, when two quarters of negative growth occurred. So you've already had two quarters of negative growth. However, your Federal uh, Reserve, in all their great wisdom, saying how red hot the economy is, everybody's got jobs, everybody's making so much money, yeah, da, 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 it can't be a recession because there's not a labor component. So they fudged, they lied, and they added a new criteria and said, but the stats on that look so awesome, even though they fake stats that come out of the non-farm payroll that has the birth death model in it, uh, doesn't take into account participation, etc., etc., etc. And so they've already lied about the recession. My suspicion is this is because they're planning an extra large recession. 
to come raining down on your head. That's right, an extra large recession is to come raging down on your head, which means they need to deny the original date for which you've already met the traditional criteria for a, a recession. This, George doesn't allude to. He is talking about some date still to be confirmed, which will be retrospectively confirmed once you've probably already considered to be a exited the recession that they'll say by the way that was a recession because this is how they deal with bad news they don't like to give you bad news they're scared you might do things that will make the it even worse news like saving like buying gold like keeping cash at home uh, like not buying stuff etc 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 so they te they don't tell you it and then they tell you by the way we've exited a recession uh, that started when it started um, but I'm here to tell you, you already entered a recession. So this makes this discussion a slightly different one to the way George has framed it. We are technically in recession and we already have a date for that. It was February. But let's listen on. <laughs> now, most of us already know that the recession starts because all of our friends are starting to lose their job and it's a lot harder to make ends meet. But if we're trying to predict the price direction of gold, we have to understand where we likely are in the recessionary cycle. We don't know that, and they're going to give us some future date. What else are we going to hear? So George is going to argue here that when you top out on rates and you start cutting rates, that the recession is only happening on the retracement. In other words, these down legs uh, just before the gray columns. He'll be illustrating that. Let's hear it. And see how that corresponds to recessions historically. Let's go back to the dot-com bust, and we can see the Fed starting to raise rates in, let's call it, May of 1999. They raise rates, then they pause. They pause for a couple months, then they pivot, start to drop rates, and that's when we see the recession. And you can see the exact same thing play out prior to the GFC. The Fed hikes rates, the Fed pivots, the Fed drops rates, then we get the recession. Same thing during COVID. Now, the point I'm going to make is actually, in my opinion, the recession is at the top of the rate cycle, um, although statistically you only get the facts in delay. So I kind of feel um, they start turning rates. It makes the Fed look a lot smarter than they truly are. They don't truly start turning knowingly before the recession and start cutting rates. There is already evidence that the statistics will be showing a recession during this period over here. That's why they start cutting rates and thereafter you have a lag effect in recessions. But that's kind of a, a semi-interesting point and, a, and an anecdote uh, broadly on that. The statistics will be for the period that they're in, but those purchases or lack of purchases thereof were possibly the decisions made in months before to delay or postpone uh, as a result. So you get a lagging effect like most indicators that lag, except yield curve inversion, which we'll be coming through, uh, through to in due su uh, succession. So the key points that we're making that differs from George is that we already entered a known recession by the accepted criteria in February. Yet the Fed wishes in a job to a due job to continue to defend the dollar in a period whilst there is um, a strong theme of de-dollarization, which is why gold has continued to go up somewhat in spite of the recession. In other words, it's different to what he's about to show you that gold's already always gone down in COVID uh, during the period of the great financial crisis and many others. In short, why has gold gone up when we're already in a technical recession? Because there is also a fiat angle to this. The king dog of fiat. So I'm saying this time is actually slightly different. The reasons we're going into recession are going to be very high interest rates, hikes, extremely high debt levels and loss in confidence in debt, which actually supports the anti-fiat category for which the central banks themselves have been buyers of gold. In most other recessions, Golds have not been the beneficiary of that weakness, while this time they have. So the recession has already begun uh, by the same measure of recession back in February. But let's continue to hear the argument being made here. It's going to play out the same way in 2023 or 2024, where the Fed is hiking rates right now. They'll likely pause, maybe in the next couple months, and then when they start to drop rates, that's when the stuff usually hits the fan. I want to show you one more chart here before we go back to the whiteboard. 
This is the inversion of the yield curve for the two-year and the 10-year. As we already said in that previous segment, it makes the Fed look smarter. They feel the softness. That's why they cut the rates. The recession is lagged in how it is reported. That makes the Fed look far more intuitive than they are. They are responding on lagging in, uh, uh, indicators and we've already met the criteria for a recession. However, this time they want a bigger one. This time they're going to continue to raise rates in a weak economy that's already met the criteria, meaning we could get an even larger recession, which is why we have spoken of a demand-destroying event, which is why we unpopular in uranium in the same way that Steve Van Meter and George might be unpopular with bullion and gold buyers and gold miner owners. Um, we're unpopular seeing concerns in the energy markets where we've highlighted the potential for oil to go down. We very much see the, the softness in uranium equities and we've already seen natural gas fall. Um, it's not popular because everybody wants the commodity mega bull. But if you're first to cross into a major demand destroying event, that could be an issue. Especially if you're already in a technical recession, you continue to ignore that fact on the basis of bad labor statistics and you continue to hike, you're going to increase the pain even further. We have subprime cars already deeply uh, biting. We have commercial property falling apart deeply biting. We have major layoffs in the tech mega caps in Facebook, Twitter, everybody chasing profit, cutting right back. That's people on 100,000, 250,000 per annum salaries all being dumped. This is where we are. Now we go to yield curve inversion. Here. So as you guys know from watching my videos, when the two-year Treasury yield goes above the 10-year, that is very abnormal. It's not good. And that is an inversion of the curve. But when we get the inversion, this is just predicting that we will likely get a recession. It doesn't give us the timing. In fact, it's very rare to get a recession while the curve is still inverted. Let's check it out by going back to the dot-com bust. And we can see that the curve... Yield, com, uh, yield inversion is typically considered a leading indicator because the recession, as you can see, occurs on the reversion back to positive. You can see the recessions occurring as you come back out. As you come back out, here is the 2008 and 9. As you come back out, here was the 2001, 2 and 3 as you come back out. But again, as I've lied, it's probably not as leading as expected because the normalization of the yield curve uh, after the inversion is already the beginning of the problem. Um, so let's have a little look uh, at George going over the yield curve inversion. At least it's not a lagging indicator. It is considered a somewhat leading indicator. And we are still in the negative zone for now. However, part of the reason why we're still in the negative zone is because of the threat of further rate hikes. So despite already being in a technical recession, they are keeping the leading indicator from flagging on its way up, out and back positive because they are threatening the likelihood of further rate hikes in what is a stagflationary environment where the inflation is stubbornly too high because of too much proliferation in spite of the fact that you are in a growth deficit already in a contracting economy. So now you have the perfect inversion of the Goldilocks uh, Goldie Knox, Goldie Locks, let's try Goldie Locks, economy that Greenspan gave you of exceedingly low inflation and super high productivity gains and asset price appreciation. Now you must pay for that. The long nights, the, the forever days, uh, the six months of summer, now you are time for your six months of winter. And we are getting hit by both of these, but the Fed's current position will continue to keep uh, an inversion in play until they themselves start to flag a pivot and then it will be allowed to come back and at that point you will get the claimed recession which actually is already in play now apart from the reason that it's already uh, been triggered technically by the definition in February uh, it's already in play quite clearly now by the demand destruction that is taking place the denial of liquidity so what's happening is we are perverting 
in this particular cycle even more aggressively by acting late to inflation and sticking to the transitory nar narrative and over tightening and lagging again to late into the recession we will have a particularly bad downturn that is going to be potentially very disabling and even anti fiat may indeed contract let's watch uh, some more curve inverts let's just call it april of 2000 but then the curve is no longer inverted in December, and then we get the recession. Same thing in the GFC, same thing during the Cervasa sickness. And this makes sense. Why? Because the curve steepening or no longer being inverted is usually a result of what we saw in the last chart, which is the Fed dropping rates after the pause. So the key point there is the, the yield curve can only come back positive once the Fed, that is being overly belligerent by being late, to inflation and now having more work to do, keeping everybody's waterboarded head under the water level and saying, take the pain, take the pain, take the pain even longer. So this time you'll be in a deeper recession and the acknowledgement for when that recession truly was means it will be a lot earlier than they probably are telling you right now, you're already in it. So the bottom line is I believe that since the Fed is still hiking rates and we'll see if they pause soon, the recession will officially start in the future. It won't have started. That's where I disagree. It's already started. It's already started. It's just going to be prolonged and made worse by an overly hawkish Fed that were overly dovish and late to the responding to the proliferation that they themselves created. So what we've essentially done is we have these long ropes of whiplash that they have created hoops and loops and they've created such a big one and they've been so slow to react it. We've actually pulled the hook on the other side of the wall out and it's coming back at you in a million miles an hour to hit you in the face. And this is all Fed central banker created mayhem, pump and dump with ever successive bigger cycles so the acknowledged recession will probably be stated by the fed at some point in the future as georgia stated however the reality of the situation means you already are in a recession and you already were technically acknowledged by the normal standards way back in february so we'll come back to what this means for gold in a minute in the past and that's why i think the experts are wrong about gold from the standpoint I think it will go down in the future. But let me be very clear. Once we get the Fed pivot and they start to lower rates, whether that's in 2023 or 2024, I would take the opposite position. And then I think the gold price will go much, much higher based on what it has done historically. Oh, but wait, there is more. I've got more ammunition to back up my theory. The gold experts are wrong. Let's go back and look at the GFC. Actually, look at the gold price right around Lehman Brothers. When that imploded, we see that the gold price imploded as well. Same thing during March of 20. So the interesting thing about that collapse is that it was kind of quick and very quick uh, down and quick back up. And in fact, very similar when we had the events of the uh, March 20 events. I don't know why I even bother saying that after I called it COVID earlier. Um, but never mind. Uh, you had a very short dip uh, in during that event. This one was uh, significantly larger, but as you can see, you went a lot, lot higher. So the key point is, if you're an investor, you should continue to invest. Even though if you have a bit of extra fiat coming in the future, you may get a better price to fulfill. But my concern for you will be supply, premiums, and trying to over time a macro investment in one of the most obvious anti-fiat trades that should be put on, uh, and I say trades, investment moves or positions you should be putting on that you can't risk issues such as delivery and supply and possible new legal uh, remits uh, or intervention by state that could impede you from buying at that lower price that is to come. This is a different bearing on traders, however. And if you're leveraged long and you have not uh, figured in the possibility of the paper price, having a major dip on a demand destroying event, you could indeed be washed out and hurt. Let's let George finish uh, though on his dips theory. Same thing during March of 2020 when we had the Cervasa sickness, when we had the lockdowns announced, gold took a plunge there as well. Why does it do this? Well, it's actually because it's doing its job from the standpoint is it is that asset has no counterparty risk. So it's the asset that people want to buy. 
And because all of these big pools of money, the sovereign wealth funds, the pension funds, need liquidity, they have to sell anything on the balance sheet that has a bid. Usually, that's gold. And since I believe what we have seen with Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, Credit Suisse, or what we're seeing play out right now in commercial real estate is just the tip of the crisis iceberg. Unfortunately, I think the worst is ahead of us. It's definitely not behind us. And that's another. On that point, I'd care to agree. So what we actually got is a much broader recession that's already started. George thinks at some point in the future. But because it's broader, I agree with him that we have a far bigger crisis that's going to happen. Uh, we think, in our view, that there's a very strong likelihood, I would say 50% or more, that this could be the economic crisis that lays everyone to waste, that sees the rollout possibly of CBDC, UBI, or at least part thereof for part of the population potentially in the Western Hemisphere. So there is worse to come on that. I'm synonymous. Are you already in recession? You already are. But the moment, the key banner moment, like the Lehman moment or whatever, is still to be tagged for you in some future event that's going to be accelerating to the downside. A bearish message and ours is even broader. In other words, you're already in the desert, but unfortunately you haven't even crossed the halfway mark. You've got the real attack vectors to happen. The dry heat, the lack of water, uh, and the poisonous snakes still to come. The reason why I think the price of gold could go a lot lower over the next few months. Now, I know a lot of you right about now are probably scratching your head and saying, mm, okay, George, I get your little charts here and your historical data, but what are you doing with your own personal portfolio? It's a great. So George in his own por personal portfolio is going to be a uh, net holder uh, as we are uh, on the basis that precious metals are insurance. Precious metals are insurance and their availability on any major crisis could become a problem um, and legalese or other over statist interventions could make it very difficult to secure uh, the investment gold. It's far better to hold it already. However, what that does mean is you could face a dip. And I have some sympathy for that view, especially if things to get worse. As he was making the point, liquidity gets chased. A couple of headlines that should uh, worry you a little bit. Here's one, for example, over here. Weimar Silver Baron is tweeting out, how to buy gold hits a Google record high as crypto investors chase world's oldest assets. The old school precious metal has a new allure for a generation seeking respite from the cryptocurrency roller coaster. So getting more moderate growth, less blowout beta and volatility, but much less to the downside is now finding a new audience in the technologically uh, millennial generation. This is typical of possible technical tops and everyone being in agreement. So there is real contrarian uh, scope here for a possibility of some rest pause on gold. And more critically, when we get a demand destroying event, the DDE that we often talk about, that could potentially bring gold back in range. Without any of my uh, previous annotations, it's important to point out that we have not run the technical high and that the previous pullback was quite extreme and the failure to make a new high had an even more extreme pullback. So you are locally at a very similar level and potentially prone to facing a third pullback, typically three strikes before you go on up. So you could see another down move in gold. I'm not going to put, a, uh, there's no technical patterns. So I'm not going to put a number to that, but you could have another third strike on gold that could set up any number of patterns. It could even go lower if we were faced with um, a broadening structure such as this. And this would be, by the way, a very bullish outcome. I do wish it would stop highlighting that damn thing. Can you please stop highlighting the goddamn thing? Okay, so that would be a broadening structure that could see a deeper dip over here actually transpire. But would it go down to $1,000? Now, personally, uh, this was the events of shutting down mid-bull market gold 
shutting down the global economy. During that period and during that technical strength, you made a 1700 number and you fell as far as a 1450 number. That's roughly $300. In my opinion, short of something even more extreme than crushing all the demand by forcing people to stay at home, to not spend the demand destruction of the lockdowns that they threw down upon us. If you can find something that is somehow more extreme than what we experienced in March 2020, you might get down to the levels of March 2020. To get down to the levels of a thousand in the current dollar valuation proliferation game, where the dollar is now seen as something that is being slowly reduced and tapered away in terms of dominance in the financial system is deeply unlikely. I do not see a thousand dollars happening again. However, I'll be very welcoming if it were to occur. Just to get down to the lows of the previous event would be very difficult and I don't see that possibility. But for example, in this broadening structure on a very big bull pole, you could have a visit down to the 1500s. It could be possible. Do I think it's even the most likely? No, not necessarily. You could just come to our splitter level, bounce and sell off, and that would in itself would be quite a reasonable correction. It depends on the tone and nature of this demand destroying event, I do suspect it could be very big and people might be forced to look for liquidity and there's always a buyer for gold, four sellers could be squeezed out. So this eventuality for a deeper dip could in fact occur. That means you could run that low. Is that a prediction? I don't know. I don't know the road they're going to take us, how long they're going to keep your head under the water. We entered a recession in February when we met the criteria for two negative quarters as far as I'm concerned. Could there be a banner defining event that's still to occur such as banks going down? I don't know. If this is the macro reset all fall down, it's quite possible you could go all time down to much lower levels, but that is literally requiring the reset event. And there is a 50% chance, I would say, of that. And at that level, who's to say? Who's to say how far? Would you uh, sell your gold for $1,000 if you had no other money and you needed to pay your rent check? Well, I, as a landlord, would take your gold as money uh, at $1,000 all day long. But maybe Many people will be prevented from that and that exchange and the, such will be the starvation of dollars that it's technically possible. I, I, I question uh, practically whether that is going to occur. So here's how we differ from the Steve Van Meter and the George Gammon case. Yes, there is a recession. Yes, liquidity chases that and you could come down. We are set up potentially for a, uh, a third high that is potentially capable of failing. However, technically we have also pointed out to the bullish side that you have run a capping descending line which is already a broadening structure and that you may already be in the environment where you could just revisit to the downside nothing more than here and go again or make slow progress even towards uh, future higher highs. It depends on the news flow, the extremity of whatever demand destroying events they will eventually give you as a result of uh, what action they are taking. How much further will they tighten? How much more aggressive? How much more pain will they allow? Only they know and what will follow it if they go to the extremity of pain, what will follow it? Then you could have excessive uh, liquidation of all assets. Should you be a leverage long right now in gold? In our opinion, given our view on the energies, we think there could be corrections in the energies. That is a typical tax on economic activity. We particularly like uranium on the short sides for now. We're watching oil starting to close the gap on the production cuts that got announced just as we were warning that oil was looking weak and precarious. People do not do production cuts into a strong economy when the, if they're making good money. It just typically does not happen, my friends. 
uh, and we can see that there was a pullback. So the production cuts came here. You got a gap on that time frame. You can see that gap. That gap has been partially closed. Uh, you still have the threat, uh, particularly we've shown against other currencies. We used the dollar index to illustrate this almost because the dollar has become a large part of the story. The dollar has become a large part of the story. If we look at the three day here and we highlight this, there is a risk that you had a preemptive spill on a left shoulder, a macro head where you failed to make a new high and then you had a breakdown that was here set up. However, production cuts were flagged. The market started to turn. You got your upside gap on the news and now you are part retracing. What oil does next from here will be very telling because there is still a reversal risk and this is part and parcel of demand being pulled out. We are going into a deeper part of an already established recession with the Federal Reserve hiking rates on a weak dollar. The dollar has been weakening. You have the dollar index. Let's have a look at that as a currency also to highlight. Uh, and they're weakening. The dollar is weakening at a moment that the Federal Reserve will least value that to be occurring. Because as the dollar weakens, of course, it imports inflation from other nations. You will note that that head and shoulders that I just drew on oil almost perfectly sat on a potential uh, head and shoulders structure here where you have a small left a big big head which is pretty clearly defined and a right shoulder and you are breaking down right now on this structure this is a fairly ominous situation for the dollar it be decries therefore that the fed has to be hawkish to protect the currency to avoid importing more inflation from all the nations that it is buying more goods than it is selling to. Ergo, the Triffin's dilemma where it proliferates outwards offshore dollars in exchange for goods. As those dollars are devaluing and those goods get more expensive, inflation is being imported, which requires further rate hikes to try firm the dollar up, which will make any future recession even worse, which will affect lending, banking, and a variety of markets. Could you get a bid under the bond markets? Yes, you could. Should you go long debt? Not for me. Should you be investment debt? Never for me. This is the end of cycle for the debt experiment. The long taper and devaluation of the dollar's dominance in the global economy is on in play. Go look at a legacy video with George Soros, where dollar dominance will consistently be eroded away, much like Sterling's post and the lead up to the Second World War. It won't necessarily be immediate and in a single event, but this is going to lead to reduced need for dollars, higher, higher inflation typically for Americans as other alternatives are being utilized. And of course, we have the X factor of what are they going to do once they've crashed this economy. If they go for their CBDCs, um, if they go for UBI, if they go for a whole thing, we could be round up into a Bolshevik global universal currency where you may still have a dollar CBDC by a different name, Fed coin, whatever the case may be. But if it assumes any of the legacy debt and related issues of the American economy that continues to go offshore with the financial system into an ever-expanding BRICS, which is getting new applicants by the day in people that wish to distance themselves from the dystopian American control over payment systems and what they did to Russia, ref the sanctions. Um, all of that is very bad news for American hegemony. And as a result, this recession will be deeper and people could be forced out of their holdings. Any dip should be met by buying, investment buying, not leverage buying. That is my take. We are already in a recession. It will get worse. They're going to continue to tighten in a recession. They will eventually stay to date, usually as you're coming out of it and as they are possibly proliferating. The bull run you will get afterwards will be proportionate to the damage that they do to the downside. So the more damage they do macroeconomically to the downside, the even bigger 
the band-aid they come in terms of further proliferation that could see real, real upside for precious metals on the other side of this. And actually, I don't see it get the full downside. Think of the events of March 2020 as well, when already parked the way through a bull market, you actually had a short and very quick dip dive, despite this being one of the biggest macroeconomic events. So in short, do not be scared out of your investment holdings. Price is temporary, value is forever, gold is not got any form of liability with anyone else. The people that are squeezed and underprepared in terms of liquidity may temporarily push the price down as all assets contract in what is likely to be one of the worst recessions experienced in a long, long time. Until next time, by the way, don't forget to trade your way to wealth. Click on the first link below in the details and book a call. You will see how and why we are actually got some hedges for this demand destroying event in some of the uh, Uranium companies that I've already mentioned and other longs and shorts that we will be taking as these events unfurl and technically reveal themselves to us. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>